Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier, and this is The Piracy Show. Now, last couple episodes I've been talking about the Carrick, the Reclaimer, can you use them for piracy? And in general, yeah, in certain situations, I guess, if, you, if you're careful, if you, you kind of own the situation and you don't let the situation own you, and you're, you know, you're really, really looking for those instances where those ships can be useful, yeah, you can use them. I mean, you can really use any ship for piracy. If you're creative and, you know, you're on top of your game, I think you can use anything. But what would be ideal? What would be the ideal makeup of a pirate group? What would be the ideal ships that you would want to use? And oddly enough, Drake Interplanetary supplies most of those ideal ships. Now, first and foremost, you're going to need a fighter. And of course, Drake Buccaneer. It's fast, it's nimble, it's an ideal shock weapon. It's got a heck of a lot of firepower. It does have some issues with weapon placement, but oddly enough, one of those issues might, in a way, be kind of intended, which is the wingtip cannons. Now, I've often t just taken the cannons off the wings because their placement is you know, very poor and in the current state of the game, more or less useless. But in f in the future versions of the game, if you were to put a couple of Joker Sucker Punches out there, which are the energy distortion cannons, those might be you know, fairly ideal placement for attacking a much larger ship. So mainly you would use your gimbaled size twos or fixed size threes, however you equip it out, for shooting at other fighters, but then you would save your wingtip cannons for disabling maybe much larger ships. I still kind of I'm not happy about that, even though if that's the way it's intended, that's not really what I'm not really what I like because I would like to still have those cannons still much closer together. Just because if you wanted to say disable another fighter rather than destroy it, the placement of those guns is far from ideal. So even though that might be the intended reason why they're out there, not a fan. But overall, it's fast, it's nimble, it's a perfect shock weapon. So for a pirate fighter, you know, also low on maintenance and easy to repair, it's ideal. Now there is one other feature of the Buccaneer, which has kind of been something that has been hinted at and dropped here and there, but has never really firmed up. And that's because it's relative to a much larger game system that we have yet to see, which is interdiction of ships. The ability to prevent ships from basically warping away or quantuming away, but warping sounds better. So we'll just say that from now on. So to keep a ship from warping away, we don't really know what that system entails or what it's going to be, but apparently this ship is supposed to be able to do that. And so once we get, you know, some actual write up on that system, hopefully that will further reinforce this ship's position as the ideal pirate fighter. Now, next up, you're probably going to need a bigger ship with a little bit more muscle in combat, a little bit more durability, but something that can also land troops and take away cargo. And Drake Cutlass, the next one up the chain. And there's a lot of features that are going into the Cutlass that we have yet to test out in game, because as we all know, the Cutlass has gone through a lot of changes recently. So it's bigger. It can now deploy a space bike. It's gotten a f another gun up front. It still has its two guns on the turret, but what size they are, how it's going to perform, how it's going to fly. These are things that we have yet to test out. And against some of the ships that it might be up against, uh, Redeemer, Vanguard Hoplite, we really don't have actual comparisons yet, so we don't know which of the three would probably be the ideal. And as far as the Redeemer goes, it's probably going to be a long time since that is probably going to get a full redesign as well. But in the end, it's still a Drake ship, so low cost, low maintenance, easy to repair, rugged. Basically, once again, the ideal pirate ship, once again, from Drake. So 
I really think that this is probably going to be the ideal, but let's, you know, let's keep our minds open to the idea that the Hoplite or the Redeemer could come back and fill that slot much better than this ship does. We just have yet to see how those ships are going to turn out in their final versions, and we have yet to test the close to final version of the Cutlass. Now, one of the things I was talking about when I was doing the Carrick and the Reclaimer, when I was talking about those ships, and one of the things I kept emphasizing was scanning, the ability to scan out ships. I mean, you need to be able to find targets. And so that's why, you know, I do kind of hold those ships up a little bit higher because they are both scanning ships. Slightly different purposes, but in the end they're made to go out and find things and you're going to need to be able to find targets now the cutlass red which is the ambulance version of the cutlass does come with a deep space scanning array in place of a turret now whether or not that can be transferred onto this cutlass is still an unknown but if you could then that would help fill that role as well on this platform if you want to have one or two cutlasses in your group that are specialized for scanning and seeking out targets, kind of adding to the value of the Cutlass. Next up, you're going to need a ship that can prevent distress transmissions from getting out or at least delay them and something that can help bring down targets and Drake Herald. Perfect. It's E-War. It has the ability to hack into things. So basically you, like, you could be hacking into somebody's ship or some NPC ship, bringing down shields, taking weapons offline, bringing down engines, maybe even telling it to open up its cargo bay doors. We don't know because we haven't seen the hacking system work and what the limitations are, but these are some conceivable uses that the ship can have. But one thing, blocking a distress transmission is something that's been in the write-up of the ship since the beginning so it kind of is a really good ship in that respect now as a fighter it's not a good ship at all um even though it does have some pretty darn good weapon placement on it it's not that maneuverable it's more of a straight line fast ship but what you can do is you can take the normal guns off and you can replace them once again with distortion cannons and then use the ship to make high speed runs on an enemy target, maybe bringing down shields, disrupting the ship's systems, while the systems operator in the back is hacking that ship and further messing with that ship's systems. You can see how this ship can really bring a whole lot to the plate even though its offensive weapon potential isn't that great it's those secondary talents that the ship has that really make it shine and once again drake ship low cost fast easy to maintain it's it's perfect for the use now take all three of these ships together and you have your ideal light quick raiding party you have the ability to board a ship to take away cargo you have the ability to disrupt a ship's systems prevent it from sending a distress transmission you have the ability to deal with fighter escorts and possibly also the ability to interdict the ability to warp away so right here you have that perfect pirate group and all these ships are low maintenance rugged and fast now one of the other things about this is is that all these ships are cheap these these are some of the cheapest ships in star citizen compared to you know when we're talking about the carracks and the reclaimers being up past the 300 hundred dollar range the Cutlass, you can still get the Drake Cutlass Black for only $100 as of the making of this video today. It is still only $100 in the store. And I think once we get the new Cutlass, that is going to go up, by the way. Uh, at least my belief is that it is going to go up. The Herald, which originally sold for, what was it, $85, which I think is now up to $90. Uh, the last time they sold it, it's up to $90 now. And, of course, the Buccaneer, which is $110, which is the same for a baseline Hornet, but 
in this you get the ship that uh, is a little bit faster a little bit more maneuverable and probably cheaper to maintain than the actual hornet itself so right here you have your ideal light rating party and you have to imagine that you know when people think about ships they often think oh you, you, they think 1v1 you know people think oh hulk versus thor or thor versus iron man they, and they try to compare things that that way but when you're looking at star citizen you have to think of them as a team what if you have 10 buccaneers two cutlasses and two heralds and you're all going after one target plus three or four escorts how quickly with these ships and with their capabilities can that situation for your target spin completely out of control for them and when they're just oh I, I i i can't handle this i don't know how to deal with this i've got two heralds plugging away at my systems trying to take everything offline and shooting me with distortion guns I have two cutlasses that are moving in and hitting me with heavier guns and trying to board me, possibly. And then I have my escorts being completely harassed by these buccaneers that are probably going to take them down. And you can see how just these three ships, you have that ideal light rating party for your light to medium ships that might be your targets. And possibly even bigger ships depending on the number of ships that you bring. And so it really is the perfect package and all from one manufacturer, strangely enough. With a group like this, all you really need to do at that point is find the people who have these ships and who want to get together and work this way and, you know, find the Herald pilot who wants to be just amazing at doing his job at you know, making attack runs on heavier ships with distortion cannons and find the guy who wants to sit in the system operator chair and hack the other ship. You know, the guys who want to specialize in that and be awesome at just doing that. And then you want to find fighter pilots who have buccaneers who know how to fly them, who know how to work together in teams and take ships out, take out those escorts real quick and then move in and possibly help disable the larger ship if they got those distortion guns out on the wingtips then you want to have like your cutlass pilots guys who want to fly a heavier beefier ship and who know how to use it and who know how to especially get in close and dock with the ship very quickly turret operators who want to help defend that cutlass while it's flying around and then you want to have some people aboard who maybe aren't pilots and who aren't system operators but are more fps oriented players who want to go in with heavy armor and clear out an enemy ship if needs be and then haul that cargo away and toss it onto the cutlass i mean here it is your dream team right here in this little holy trinity of awesomeness from drake now let's say you get this dream team together you've got all your pilots all put together there you go but let's say you get so proficient that you're able to take on bigger targets that possibly haul more cargo you need a ship to get away with that cargo so once you've come in you've made your initial hit the escorts are all tied up and the enemy target the big ship whatever you're trying to take down is now dealing with multiple opponents that's when you would bring in something a little bit heavier like your drake caterpillar you bring that in to help finish off the enemy ship, whatever needs to be done. But now you can bring in more borders, but you can also take away a lot more cargo. This thing has cargo bay doors on the front of it and all along the sides, either side of the ship. So it's ideal for loading and unloading a lot of cargo very, very quickly. So, you know, when you're out there and you're taking down targets, you know that that stopwatch has, uh, has started. The clock is ticking and you only have a certain amount of time to do things before someone catches on that something's happening or somebody comes to check on their friend that all of a sudden isn't transmitting anymore so you need to be quick and efficient and this ship is ideal for it and also landing on a planet if you land ground troops on a planet and you have to take cargo away once again here's your perfect solution for that now of course, there might be specialist military vehicles that would be better for deploying troops than this ship is, but 
once again, this is still labeled as a civilian transport, even though it is heavily armored. And once again, it's a rugged, dependable ship that is supposed to be easy to maintain. So you can see how it, the emphasis on cost reduction across the entire lineup and the emphasis on capability, especially tuned towards these types of operations are what brings all these ships together and makes them that kind of perfect pirate family. Now, you know, with the past videos, of course, I was talking a lot about scanning and finding targets. And there is one ship that I would like to add to this that technically isn't a Drake ship, but based on appearance, I kind of want to make it an honorary member of the Drake family and a ship that I think would also be ideal in this mix. And that's the Anvil Terrapin. I mean, smooth out a few of those lines. If someone told you that this was a Drake ship, you wouldn't disbelieve them. You'd be like, okay, it's the uh, Drake Terrapin. Cool. Once again, it's a tough ship, but it's made for deep space scanning, for finding things. So obviously perfect for looking for targets. Can't really haul cargo, I guess, maybe loose bouncing around inside of it. You can, but it does have a silent running capability, which when you got your eyes out there and you're looking for potential targets, that would be a pretty darn good ship to have. So all of these ships together, I think, kind of make the ideal pirate ships, the baseline of what you would want in a pirate group, the ships that you would want to emphasize the most. There are so many other ships out there that we can talk about um, that could be situationally useful, certainly. Um, but I think this is where the emphasis should lie. These, these are ships that are built for the job. They're made to get in there fast. They're made to cause shock, confusion, panic, and then escape quickly with as much of that cargo as they can possibly get. Emphasizing these ships and those kinds of ideals in your pirate operations, I think, are going to lead to much greater long-term success than worrying about how to use this ship and how to use that other ship. Focus here. Like This is a really where I think that the eyes should be. And we can talk about other ships, and this might be good here, that might be good there, but these are going to be the core of any pirate operation. You like, Let's say I can take a reclaimer out and say, oh, I'm going to go pirate in a reclaimer, but that's not going to go all that well if I don't have buccaneers and all kinds of other ships supporting me. Those ships that they look like just the little guys here and there, and why don't we just talk about the big ships? Those little guys are the foundation upon which your house is built. So without them, there's nothing. And so I think this is the best way to build out that foundation. And this is where, where your eye should be first before anything else. Anyways, that's the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching.